Welcome to the Dealer Playbook Podcast. My name is Michael Cirillo, and each week I sit down with the brightest minds in marketing, sales, and leadership to help you level up your career in automotive. Thank you so much for spending your time here with me today. Now let's open up the playbook. Here we go. All right, I'm sitting down now with fellow Canadian. Okay, you know me by now. We got to pause and just like bask in the glory of (laughs) Canada for a minute. Joanna, thanks so much for joining me on the Dealer Playbook Podcast. Cool. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me here. I'm still a little bit jealous that you are in a part that does not snow, and I currently look out a window to Canada's winter wonderland, but I'll get over it. Yeah, I know. Well, it's been snowing here. Like, that's the promise, right? That you move to Victoria and you'll never see snow. Like, I lived here for seven years and I saw snow three times in that period. Yeah. Um, And then the last year has been... I know we said we're not going to talk about weather, but we're Canadian and it's the middle of winter, or the end of winter. It's, yeah. The end of winter is the time to talk about it because it's always like, can you believe winter's over already? Or, oh, why is winter dragging on? <laughs> it, it's We get that feeling near the end of winter. Like it's it's when we took our last provincial exam in high school and we knew we didn't have to go back <laughs> to high school anymore. And that's how we feel like at the end of every winter. Or how I felt at the end, the last phys ed class I had to take. At the end of Phys Ed 10, I was like, never again. I'm never doing that again. And that was like, yeah, same kind of thing. So for those of you who have no clue where Victoria is or where I am, Joanna and I are pretty much neighbors at this point, especially in the context of the vast landscape of Canada. But uh, yeah. and, and we're not talking about that today, just so you know. We're talking about something that I don't think we've ever talked about on the podcast up to this point, something I'm super pumped to jump in with. Because if you have ever ever and and by ever i mean you've likely stumbled upon the writings and the musings of joanna you you m- might not have known that it was but if you've if you've ever delved into anything to do with copywriting you have likely stumbled upon her work uh super pumped to have you on the show i'm going to kick this off with the bare bones what the heck is copywriting and i know it's not like we talked about pre show the you legal. know, legal side of things. The copyright law. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. I know. The first podcast I ever did, they took questions in advance of it, and they were all around like, okay, I have this intellectual property. How do I go about And I was like, oh, wrong do copywriting. Do I look like a lawyer to you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I cannot help you there. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, copywriting is essentially what it comes down to is uh, – as this is my canned phrase, we can unpack it, but it's the art and science of using your words to get people to say yes. Um, so that's all in your words. And usually of course we're talking right now and using words and getting people to at some point say yes, um, potentially. Um, but so we're talking about in right, written form, right? So yeah. what do you write on your in your emails, what do you write on your website? What do you write in your ads? All of that kind of stuff that um, factors into selling online. So it's, I mean, and I would even go from there and peel back the, the, the onion a little bit more and say, anytime you found yourself compelled to read something in an email or on a website or heck, I mean, even in newspapers and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that, it's likely because the hands of a copywriter have touched it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So hopefully. Yeah. And, and so looking at, you know, the, this, this, how it fits into the marketing mix. I mean, I, I guess I want to dive in here and say, okay, now that we have an idea of what it is, it's basically the words that you feel like reading, you know, not these big, massive chunks of like 500 uh, word text that are positioned to make you sound like the smartest business person on the planet rather you know, compelling, like you said, words that make you want to say, yes, I love that. That's brilliant. Um, where do we start? I mean, like if, if you're looking at a, at a, at a website, small business website, um, I mean, do you cringe when you first look at them and you go, Oh, I know what I would do to change this. Yeah. I mean, a small business website, there are a couple challenges there. And 
what we do at Copy Hackers is teach small businesses to write their own copy. So okay. it ends up that copywriters also take our training because small businesses are hiring them. But I firmly believe that any business owner is probably in far better shape to write their own copy than hiring somebody that they can afford as right. a great copywriter. So arm yourself with those tools. Um, I <laughs> distracted myself there with that thought. Can you repeat your question? I'm so sorry. It's I'm okay. getting over a cold and my brain is in a fog there. It's okay. Which actually, if we look at the transcript is actually brilliant copywriting because it would have sucked the reader right back into <laughs> reading the transcript. <laughs> sure. We'll pretend it was strategic. Yeah, that's right. It was very strategic. Um, well, my thought is, okay, when, when you look at something, because I mean, f from my experience, this is something oh. that most people struggle with is capturing their audience in written form. Mm. Uh, also in a way, I, I feel like everybody... I feel like everybody wants to just make themselves sound really smart that they forget, wait a second, my words here need to, to achieve an objective. So yeah. what's, I guess, what are the biggest mistakes you see right out of the gates and what do you do to remedy those? So if we were yeah. to, if we were to just look at a, I'm sure you've purchased a car at some point in your life. If you were to look uh -huh. at a car dealer website or even yeah. a real estate agent website, what's your first impression? What do you go? Okay. I see what mistake they're making here. How do I fix that? Yeah. So one of them is sadly, sometimes it's just, they've got a website template and they think they have to fill in this much room with a bunch of text. Mm. So then they sit down and they think of it as text and they just start writing based on what's in their heads. Um, which of course it's like any, I'm not technically a salesperson. I know any great salesperson out there would be like, uh, uh, that ain't you, right. but I do sell with words online. And so I don't get the benefit of standing across from somebody who wants to, who's shopping for a car, or considering in whatever stage of awareness they're in for a car or for a home or whatever it might be, and asking them a question, listening, letting them tell me all of their pains and problems, and then kind of repeating them back to them, um, which of course we've seen, and yeah, I've, I've bought cars, um, absolutely. Um, the, it's great. Now I say that as somebody who doesn't have the benefit of being able to stand across from somebody. I'm sure people who have to stand across from somebody and sell to them like one-on-one -on -one are like, Oh, I wish I could just do this online without having to be face to face. Yeah. So like, you know, we could both compare notes and, and whatever. But, um, but when you're selling with your copy, which is what your copy is there to do. It's not there to just be informative. You'll be informative, but with the goal of selling and framing it in such a way that it's desirable. So it's the same thing online as it is in person. You're still trying to listen to what your prospect is looking for, what challenges they're going through, and then you just repeat those back to them. So the biggest challenge not only small business owners make, but everybody makes when it comes time to writing copy is sitting down, opening up some sort of thing that they're supposed to be writing into, whether that's the CMS for their website, or it's a document, they're just like opening up a word doc or something like that. And you sit there and you think, what should I say? And then, then you yeah. start like writing it. Right. And that's that moment alone is like, stop, don't do anything more. No, <laughs> stop. Stop what you're doing right now. What would you do in real life? You wouldn't just start pitching something at somebody, right? You'd have to listen first and then repeat back to them. So what I recommend small business owners and all people do when they're writing copy is um, go swipe messages from your prospects. Um, so that means, I mean, there's a lot of different ways we can go about doing this, but, um, and that could be just talking when you talk to somebody in real life noting what they've said, writing that down and using that to feed your copy. Of course, um, going out and seeing on review sites for cars, like, and there are of course all sorts of, like if we're talking about car dealerships or for buying a house on like, is it Trulia or Zillow, whatever the case is, it's yeah. these people where people are writing what their challenges are with buying a house or a car, what their expectations are, what their frustrations are, what the great outcome was, what the value was. They're describing your offer using real words. And so yeah. you don't have to sit there and stare ahead and figure out what to put on the page. Go over to these places where people are writing these exact things, read through them and any copy, any words you read or phrases you read where you go like, wait, what's that? And you kind of back up and look over it again, or you think like, oh yeah. 
anything you have a reaction to when you're reading is potentially great copy, and that's where you should go to start writing your website, your website, or your email, or whatever you're trying to write. I, it, you know what it makes me think of is um, that, it, you know, and maybe this is a benefit that we didn't have even 20, 25 years ago. It, this tool, you might have heard of it called the Internet, uh, is always listening. Mm. Right? And always like, talking, too. It's always Everybody's talking. Everybody's saying everything, yeah. And we rarely think, oh, wait, like you said, I think is so brilliant and, and so it's so simple it's brilliant because it's just sitting there right in front of you. It's like that time I lost my car keys and looked for 45 minutes, but they were in my hand the whole time. That That's how in front of us yes. the, the Internet is. That you have sites like Zillow or autotrader.ca or .com or any of these other sites and people are inputting their pain points or their not so pain points and Mm -hmm. you can use that like you said I mean it's so brilliant you you can use what real live people are saying to gauge your own reaction and then somehow turn that into the message that you want to share totally and you don't even have to rewrite it in a lot of cases like you can just copy it verbatim From the review, if there's like a line, you copy it verbatim and put it on the page. Don't summarize it. Don't try to change it. Just take that natural language. And usually what you'll find, the more you do this, you really stumble upon some really interesting, um, um, like specific, sorry, my headphone just fell up, (laughs) some specific examples. Things that you'd have to sit there and really think like, "Hmm, okay, what's my... What's my prospect's problem? If you were to think of like a framework where you're like, okay, I'm going to write copy and problem, agitation, solution. So their problem, what's their problem? And that alone, that's the beginning of writer's block right there. It's like your brain is like, you don't know. You don't know what to say, do you? You have no idea. Yeah. You suck at this. Yeah. Stop yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. You're going to get it wrong. Just try. And so you've got all this bad stuff going on in your head. Um, so stop right away. Stop. And then if you just copy that stuff over, I mean, we've done this time and again, this is, this is how we find every message. Basically 90% of every message we end up putting on a page or an email comes from us just like listening, like just go out there and listen and copy it verbatim and then do minor things to tweak it. But we've seen, and this is for outside of this, but for, this is the big example that I give a lot is for a rehab center where we did exactly this. Um, we went and looked at books about living with alcoholism, with living with a recovering alcoholic, um, or and I looked at six different books about exactly that, which might sound like, why would you look at a book? Because I was right. trying to sell people on signing up to go to rehab at a rehab treatment center in, in Florida. My job was to come up with a copy for that, so why would I go look at a book? Well, I stole the idea from Jay Abraham, a phenomenal marketer who like said sure. it is a side note in this like answer he gave at a conference. And I was like, what Amazon <laughs> review mining. So he was like, yeah, if you're, you know, go look in Amazon reviews. And that was, I think his whole phrase was just go look in Amazon reviews. And then he like stopped talking. And so it left like this whole room to explore anyway. So I'm looking in these book reviews on Amazon for how to live with addicts and addiction and, and get over it and 12 step programs, etc. cetera. Um, and I came across this line a lot of lines, but one of them that stuck out was um, someone reviewing the book said, you know, if you think you need rehab, you do. And I believe he was talking about his daughter who he tried to get into rehab for so long. And the line that he did say, yeah, was if you think you need rehab, you do. And I was like, interesting. Mm -hmm. All these other rehab centers on their homepage and their headlines, they were saying things like it was really, um, emotional language that was meant to soften the blow. Like, don't worry, you'll be okay. Right. This kind of like, and I was like, there's maybe not, that's not how we heard addicts talking. That's not how we heard the families of addicts talking. They didn't arrive at the point of looking for rehab going, okay, I'm going to do this. It's usually like this massive panic, right? Where you're like, holy crap, my life is falling apart or something terrible happened last night. Yeah. I'm waking up sober now and I have got to solve this. And you're, you're not interested in those softer messages. So when we went and listened and looked through the reviews, people were saying real things. Like if you think you need rehab, you do. So we made that the headline and tested it against a couple other variations of a headline 
it beat everything else by a landslide. Like wow. it said things to, it was crazy. It was so good. So I talk about it all the time. Um, sold out beds at this facility, kept them booked up, like really, really great. Their leads, I think, tripled after that, uh, which is really important, right? You wouldn't, I wouldn't have known by sitting there going, okay, what are people in rehab or people thinking of rehab? What are they struggling with? I wouldn't have known. Even if, even if I were yeah. a recovering addict, I wouldn't have known. So right. go listen. And it's amazing the things you can discover. Well, and <laughs> What I find so fascinating about this is you now add your voice to a, a list of other marketers who say, look, here's one of your first steps. Kind of just be shut up and stop talking and go listen. <laughs> exactly. Like, you have, you have two ears and one mouth. Use them proportionately. <laughs> Exactly. And we Good don't rule. know as business no. people we we always like, for some reason we're like, we need to spew whether it's in the form of typing or physically talking, we need to spew out information. But yeah. you, you know, I, I just want to draw attention to this for, for you listening in. I mean, think about the simplicity of what Joanna just said here. That's that I, I feel like I need to just go spend the rest of the day on Amazon. Step one, duct tape mouth. Step two, <laughs> Go to sites like Amazon or Zillow or wherever, and it, it, if you're picking up what what's just been dropped here, a power bomb, um, she, you're basically saying you didn't rewrite anything. You used a line that this dad had yeah. come up with, and shablam, right? It yeah. just like resonated with the audience. Yeah. There's a flip side to this, though, and I kind of want to get your feedback on this. I mean, I feel like, and I've been there. Um, so I, I know firsthand kind of the emotion attached to, but I wish I could just please everybody because I, I just want mm -hmm. everyone to be my client. Mm -hmm. And we yeah, see this. Yeah. I mean, I see this all the time when I'm talking to my clients and you think, OK, hey, let's 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 work on a campaign. And when you start getting feedback, it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. like hold the jets here, man. Like we're not going to be able to talk to everybody. Yeah. So I, I this is a perfect example because not everybody is going to be need rehab mm -hmm. and you weren't concerned and the client wasn't concerned about trying to reach somebody that was like, do they need rehab? <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. Like you, you kind of eliminated those audiences and said, no man, yeah. we're, we're rolling right in deep to, to yeah. this segment. How do you, mm -hmm. how do you get around that? I mean, do you have multiple messages going at the same time for different audiences or do you just say, Hey man, all chips in, I'm going, I'm going for this audience. Cause I know we can win here. Yeah. Well, that, I think I love the question and I, I, I feel you, right? Like I hear it all the time. Like, mm, that's Both great. But that's just kind of like, right. Like, Immediately yeah. deflate, like, no, oh, you just diluted the whole power of the message. Okay. Yeah. I guess you're going to have a low conversion rate if that's what you really want. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, um, for that example, that was for a homepage. So if you think you need rehab, you do. That was for a homepage. If I was writing a more targeted landing page, I would look for something that is more targeted than even that. Um, but yeah, but it was still saying, so when we're writing copy, this is the rule that all great copy, I believe, I've seen in my 15 years, um, the thing that is underneath it all, any page you're going to write, any email you're going to write, start here, who is my one reader, not my 700 readers, who is the one person that will actually use their eyes and their brain and read on the page. So don't try to like grab everybody's attention with like flying stars and things, but who's that one reader? What's the one offer that they need on that page? One offer, one. What's the one big idea that will take the reader from starting the page through to reading all the way down the page. And again, I say page, you can sub in email yeah, as well yeah. um, and get to that offer. And then as a final like icing on the cake, is there a promise you can add in? The word promise is a beautiful word on a page. It immediately says you've got skin in the game too and you're not full of crap. And if it turns out you are full of crap, there's a way out for the end user. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Um, so that's it. That's the foundation of it. One reader, one offer, one big idea, and one promise. If you can have those figured out on the page before you start writing, 
the writing will go a lot faster and it'll be more effective, but it all hinges on that one reader on really identifying who that is. And we recommend that, I mean, people see a hundred percent of traffic coming to a page and they want a hundred percent of it to convert, which mm -hmm. everybody knows, stop it. Like, yeah. don't think that, don't do that. <laughs> But how, what, what percentage is the comfortable space to work in? So don't ask for 90. We suggest that you think of your page and you look at your page and people coming to it and you try to get 20 to 35% of them to pay attention, to come into your story. If you can do that, that's even aggressive, right? Mm -hmm. But if you can do that, you can say people coming to our rehab homepage in this example, just because we're using the example, um, they're coming to this homepage and they are, um, they've been here a couple times or they've never been to this page before, um, or whatever the case may be. They have, some of them will have family that they're thinking should be in rehab. Others are thinking, I don't know. Um, so you can like, there's the looky loos. There's people who are just starting to feel the, the pain or the problem. There's people who are exploring all of their solutions there are people who know your brand name and have like heard about you before. They know their pain. They know the solutions. They know your product. Now you have to push them to another level of awareness. So you've got all of those ones to choose from. Choose one stage of awareness are you writing this page for somebody who's just feeling pain, right? Are they just in that pain moment where their car just broke down and they need a new car now, yeah. right? And it's maybe yeah. whatever. Or are they solution aware where they're like considering a bunch of different options already? They felt the pain. They've started looking into their options and now they're like at that solution aware stage or are they product aware? Like they know they want a Toyota to sell. They know they want to use Toyota to sell. Right. That's a very different person to write for than someone whose car just broke down and doesn't yet know anything about the brand. They're absolutely looking for the type of car if they want it used or new or if they want, you know, whatever it might be. And their budget, of course, will help dictate that, et cetera. Um, and then, of course, the most aware when they're like, okay, I'm ready to buy now. I just need to know which Toyota to sell I can get at what great price, how quickly it can be delivered, and does it have the features essentially that I'm looking for to buy. You have to choose one. We want all of them. Yeah. But when you write for all of them, obviously, yeah. you get none. You're lucky to get one. Which so is choose what's currently one. happening. Everywhere, right? Yeah. And it's every single site. So if you are the one person who decides to take this advice <laughs> and actually use it, your conversion rate is very likely to improve. Give it a shot because the way people are doing it now, they end up frustrated because they're not getting great results because they're not actually trying to follow – the better practices here, sadly. Well, and what fascinates me about this is when you kind of strip down to that level and you say, hey, we're going we're gonna to use this very specific message with the intention of targeting this very specific group of people. When it comes time to dig into your analytics and see what's going on or, or conversion rates or whatever, it's going to be that much easier for you as well to, to identify where you could improve. Because mm -hmm. you're not going to be like, wait, so there was the first time car buyer, there was a low credit car buyer, there was, a, you know, like that sort of mm -hmm. a thing, which is what's yeah. happening right now. And it's a complete dumpster fire. Yeah. Of like mess. I think I tweeted you actually, we're going to have to throw this up on the video, but I think I tweeted you a few weeks ago and I was like, what metrics are most important to you? And here, here's what I thought was so fascinating. And guys, listen, this is not a dig at this industry that I oh so love, mm -hmm. but I reach out to Joanna and I reach out to other individuals who are all, you know, phenomenal marketers um, who, who eat their own dog food or cat food. So, you know, if you're a cat lover um, and it was simple, we look at this, we look at this, we look at this. I asked that same exact question to people in the car business and you know, the kind of crap answers I got back. Oh no. We, we look at everything. And I'm like, you look at, so let me get this straight. I'm like, but what do you look at specifically? Like day to day when you're in the trenches, you mean yeah. to tell me you're looking at all like 5,000 plus metrics in Google analytics. Yeah. And I think, you know, the simplicity of your answer, maybe we hadn't thought about it. I, I mean, I don't think I had thought about it that deeply until now, but the simplicity of your answer of, I look at these metrics really ties down to the simplicity of the actions. I think that mm -hmm. you're like the, the dialed in actions that you're taking. Yeah. Be because if you're trying to reach too many people, then you have no choice but to look at, I look at all metrics all day long. And it's like, dude, that's your full-time job then because 
and and you would want to jump off a bridge too. <laughs> How do you optimize so I can see all of it? Right now, what like yeah, so? Now what do I do? Which part do I fix? What parts? What parts broken? Like I don't. How and it could, looks like either everything's broken or everything's good, perfect, and you actually yeah. have no idea where you're at. Yep, exactly. I know we talk about. I talked about this at the call to action conference at Unbounce. I think it was two years ago. Now might have been three. Oh, time. <laughs> um, but about giving every element one job to do. So if you have so I, when I'm writing copy and we're thinking about funnels and things like that, um, I think about the production of a customer in an assembly line. So you're creating out of nothing, you're creating a customer. So what happens along the way there? Well, you have the ad that attracted them. The ad headline had one job to do. The ad call to action had one job to do. You land that ad on a landing page where that headline has one job to do. Mm. Did it do it or didn't it do it? If it does the job, if each job, if each element does its job, then we'll keep moving the prospective customer along the assembly line toward being the ta-da, paying happy customer at the end that's been produced. If something fails along the way, if the ad headline attracts people to it, that's its job, but the ad call to action fails to get them to click, that's its job, then the assembly line is broken at that point, mm-hmm. right? The can't, things can't move over, that it can't, you can't move the customer in progress along to the next stage there. If you were to measure the whole thing and say, did we produce customers or didn't we produce customers, and you got, yeah, we got some customers out of it, but you didn't look back through the assembly line or we didn't get customers today or whatever it might be. So just further what you're saying about measuring everything, how would you ever know what's broken? What's not doing its job in there? Is it, is it my headline on the landing page? Is it my call to action? Is is something like on my product detail page on my site or X car where you build the cars or, and I don't mean technically broken. I don't mean like, Oh, the link is broken. (laughs) I mean, you you know, you can find it in other ways. That's not copy, (laughs) but is there something that should be happening around your call to action? If people are all getting toward this one page where you want them to go, but they're not moving on beyond it, then you look at that page and you assess each job, each element on the page and see if it's doing its job. And that's how you start to identify where to fix what's broken. I but you that. have to know that everything needs its own job to do first. I, I flip and love this because it's, it's, I mean, it's just so, um, it's so important. Mm. Um, so if I had to break this down, here here's basically the, the strategy that we've come up with. Mm. It is shut up, start listening, use Amazon. There's a little nugget for you. You use Amazon and use Auto Trader and use Zillow. It doesn't whatever industry you're in, hit up that industry site and start listening. Mm. Then go to your site. See, see, all of this is gonna feel like non-execution. This is the patient side of building your business. This uh, is sharpening it, the axe before you cut, it, right? It's sharpening the axe. And I get it. Like, I've been there. Uh, Joanna, you, you've you been there. Like, we want things to happen fast. But here's, I think, the the validation. It's okay to feel that, that feeling like, can this move faster? But I think the promise here is when you lay a solid foundation, then you have something to actually build on. And and so go through and from there, man, like start auditing every page of your site. And if you cannot answer the question, what is the purpose of this page? What is it doing? Then, dude, you need to build a new assembly line. Mm-hmm. And, ah. and I'm not suggesting go find a new website provider. And like, I, I'm not trying to get all political here. I'm just saying... Mm-hmm. Work work now with your website provider if you don't have the ability to do that or work with your WordPress theme creator or whoever yeah. and, and sit down and be like, okay, I got to get clear on what I'm trying to do here because yeah. 
me trying to make myself look smart with my like, you know, the pose that everybody does on their <laughs> yeah. That's not working. Yes. No, no, it's true. Yeah. And, and sometimes it does come down to, I mean, if this isn't a job that you want to hire yourself to do for your own business, then that's where it is good to find the right person. Yeah. To help you with that. So even if it's not a matter of rebuilding your site, but if you haven't been asking those questions right. of your site, then you need someone who can help you ask and answer those questions because the opportunity is phenomenal online scales like in person does not scale. So you can do such a good business online um, that you can also do in person. Absolutely. I, again, I have a bias because I work in the online world, um, but there's such a huge opportunity. That's because online's awesome and we're geeks. I mean, like at the end of the day, <laughs> right? Like, let's be yeah. honest. It's good to be though. It's good. Such it's a good geek. life. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I geeked out over how pretty I thought this white table was because my last office had a really like uh, I was like, oh, it's so pretty. It's gonna Love look, it. It's going to look so good. So, uh, listen, I mean, I feel like I could talk about this all day. I know both of us are pretty passionate about this kind of stuff. Um, super appreciative of your uh, time and, and sharing this quick strategy. And that's exactly what it is for those of you listening. Um, try it out. You uh, only positive is going to come from this. So uh, thanks so much. How can those listening uh, reach out and get in touch with you? Sure. Um, On Twitter at copy hackers with an S at the end. Um, Copy hacker doesn't like getting tweets that are meant for me. So copy hackers Um, and otherwise online, there's lots more to learn. We've got a pretty active blog at copyhackers.com where you can Learn ways to write, to use your words, to get people to say yeah. Love it. So we're going to have a quick summary of this over at thedealerplaybook.com forward slash 110. How about that? Ah, Episode 110. 110. Where we are going to link you out to copy hackers z- 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 <laughs> with an S. <laughs> and uh, until next time, man, keep the playbook open and dominate.